Hello. Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to Francie's Corner Bar. Um, hopefully, everyone's having a great day today. We um, we had a very relaxing day. We actually kind of switched it up. Typically, we would um, do Christmas in the morning, then have a nice breakfast and everything. So today, we um, Shannon and I got up. We actually slept in a little bit later than we normally would, and. Um, she made eggs benedict she used some farm fresh eggs that a neighbor had dropped off for christmas to us and then she made up uh, two batches of hollandaise sauce because the first and batch broke actually both of them were failures but I, they I, tasted <laughs> well they tasted really good it's just that i i need to take lessons on how to make a proper hollandaise i think i overcooked the eggs or something so but they were very tasty and then we um had a nice lunch she also then made a chicken pot pie because last night I had done a French chicken in a pot, and we actually had a really nice evening. We actually yeah. sat out in the party cave, and we had a couple of drinks, and we talked and caught up, because Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we were just completely flat out. And I know one day, you had like a 14-hour day, and then another day, it was like that, and it was just crazy. I didn't mess up my hair, so, did I? Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry gonna, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just rambling like, on. We're just kind of talking. rambling so. on. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. We don't want to keep you. And, and first off, we just want to thank everyone for uh, um, for following and liking and uh, uh, our efforts here. We, we had a really uh, great holiday season. Uh, you know, had a lot of fun preparing, you know, all, all the holiday cocktails and stuff. And so uh, this show tonight, first I want to start talking about sparkling wines because I know um, next week is new year's and everybody's probably going to have some champagne on new year's eve so i wanted to talk about sparkling wine there are uh a, you know champagne is the most uh known sparkling wine it comes from the champagne region in france so just like cognac is brandy that comes from the cognac region of france champagne comes from the Champagne region, and there are very strict guidelines and rules for Champagne. But Champagne is not the only sparkling wine you can purchase. You can also purchase Prosecco as well as Cava. Uh, Prosecco is from Italy, uh, and that too is also controlled by, uh, you know, very specific uh, rules and regulations as is Cava from Spain. And then there's just American sparkling wine, a lot of which is actually made in the French method. Uh, one of our favorite um, sparkling wines is actually, we, we like Mum uh, uh, from Napa. Mum is actually, um, they also have a vineyard in uh, Champagne. So you, GH Mum is the, uh, the, the French brand, but we actually like this Mum Napa. It's a reason, reasonably priced. It always goes on sale for, for the holidays. And uh, they have, now this is a brute. I did want to talk a little bit about um, the sweetness of champagnes because it is somewhat confusing. Brute is the driest of all the champagnes. There is a, um, and then actually dry is dry. It kind of dry is sweeter. Extra dry is not as sweet as dry. And then it's brute. So depending on your preferences, if you like really dry, you'll want to go with the brute. If you like it more on the sweet side, you'll want to go with the dry or an extra dry is in between. Uh, so, and most champagne is, is non-vintage, which means they mix uh, wines from uh, different years, but you can also get um, a vintage. So this is a DVX, which is a vintaged champagne. This one's actually from 2000. This one, I was telling Mike, we actually need to open this up. This is uh, 20 years is pretty old for a bottle of champagne. They pretty much say, you know, you know champagne will, you know, keep three to four if it's non-vintaged. And then they say it keeps up to 10 if it's vintage. So this is a 20-year-old bottle of champagne. Um the expectation is it's going to be darker and the bubbles are going to be much less tiny. Um, so, I mean, much tinier. Tinier, yeah. yes. Tinier bubbles in the older champagne. So we are going to be popping this open for New Year's Eve. So uh, 
Um, but if you're gonna make something like a mimosa, or one of my favorites is actually a poinsettia, which a poinsettia is just the cranberry juice and the sparkling wine, then you can go with something like a, a Prosecco or a Cava. All of those are gonna be, you can actually get, you know, decent bottles of Prosecco or Cava for, you know, between, you know, 10 to, to 13 bucks. So, you know, you'll wanna mix those with the juices. And then, you know, I, you know, if you wanna spend, you know, you can actually, you know, French bottles of champagne, you can spend upwards of 50, 60 bucks a bottle. But, uh, you know, if you just want a good, you know, good tasting sparkling wine, I recommend the, the Mum Napa. So that is it on the sparkling wines. The other thing that I'm very excited about is, so we have, we've made a bunch of holiday cocktails and we really have not tasted any of them. So um, we made the limoncello and the pomp, pompomo, uh, I knew I was gonna get that wrong, pompomelo cello. It, which is the grapefruit, and we um, we want to taste these. And actually, I think what I when I made these batches, when I mixed them up, I did I did fifty percent water to fifty percent sugar, and I'm suspecting it's pro they're probably a little sweet because they absolutely look thicker than um, than what I was expecting. But um, which, if that's the case. We'll just, uh, they'll be good. They'll be great in, uh, in cocktails uh, and put less simple syrup in there. So this is the limoncello. And I actually got just a bottle of one of our favorite limoncellos that we, actually, can you get that sure. right off? Because um, I wanted to compare the color and the taste against that. Now, the, um, the reason I made the... Um, Pompamello uh, was because I actually looked to buy some and I thought it was pretty darn expensive. So I made the grapefruit. So I and I, I didn't I don't have something to taste compare that with. And then this is the uh, this is the box. So you can see this is much more yellow, but my I suspect there's an artificial color in there because yeah, like that. because that color does not look very natural in my opinion. This one, the one we made, has, you know, much stronger lemon smell. It is a little, in my opinion, a little too sweet. But it's honestly not that sweet, much sweeter than this. Taste yeah, that. I don't know. So when I made, when I mixed these up, I mixed them up at 28%. Um, I actually, on our website, www.friesyscornerbar.com are all the recipes. And I, I actually put the math in there about how you can, how you calculate the, uh, based on the weight ratio, the amount of water, the amount of other additives you want to put in there. Um, I think the next time I do it, even though I really, I think they were both equally as sweet. Um, the, the store bought another, I might actually make it a little less sweet. And then here is the grapefruit. How's that? That I think is really good. It smells awesome. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's a little more bitter than the lemon. So, which I always love my bitter, bitter flavors. And now we are going to do my favorite part. Well, this is the eggnog which we have been aging this eggnog for two months. We made it on our show um, at, at the beginning of November. So we are going to, we're gonna drink it cold. You can drink eggnog cold. You can, uh, you can actually put it on the rocks if you want, or you can warm it up. But I think I want, uh, I want to try the first taste cold. We may, uh, so. I'm pouring the eggnog, it's nice and thick, has a good consistency. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna grate a little bit of nutmeg on top, and then a little bit of uh, cinnamon stick, just to give it that festive flare. It broke apart. Okay. okay, and here is the eggnog.
Mm. Oh, that's man. good. That's good. It's really good. This will definitely become a holiday tradition. Yep, eight nine. Yep, yes, definitely. So. Cheers. Love, Love you. you. So Merry Christmas, Merry everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. And uh, <laughs> did you want to say a few words? We're just uh, we're very thankful. Yes, we for, are. For Twenty twenty has definitely joined. changed everything, and um, in some ways for the better. And, and uh, what it's done for us is helped us explore um, new things to try. It's brought us closer together as a family. Um, it's, it's, it's been rough. It's been tough. It's been different, but, um, I think some good also came out of it. So, oh. so, uh, and here's thanks, to 2021 to 2021, a new year. So as always, thank you for, uh, for watching. And, and we're going to go open presents. Yes. We have an open presents. That's what I was trying to Merry say earlier. Merry Christmas. Okay. We usually open presents in the morning and then had breakfast. Well, today we had breakfast. We had a nice lunch. We watched shows. We hung out. Um, we have some nice Same porter houses <laughs> and hey. then we're going to open presents. So Merry we're all excited. Christmas. Merry Christmas. I got a lot to say. Thank you for watching.